One of the big questions about electric cars is how long does it really take to charge them up? And I happen to be sitting in a 2020 Tesla Model Y. This is the latest crossover SUV from Tesla. This is my car. It has about 3,500 miles on it. And I just drove it 250 miles to drain the battery all the way to zero. And so I'm gonna plug in now at their latest and greatest, the fastest charger that they make, the V3 Supercharger, which charges at a rate of 250 kilowatts. That's like the speed at which the electrons flow into the battery and see exactly how long it takes. Then after we get that data point, I'm gonna pull data from Teslab and see, generally speaking, how long do you really need to charge this thing all the way up to be on your trip or just to fill up and go back home. So stay tuned for that. Let's get into the video. So when you get to a charging station like this, you might wanna set the limit. On a normal basis, you really just take it up to this kind of, this daily limit here. But if you need to, you can push it all the way to trip. And that's what I've done. So you can see the battery is completely drained here. And when I plug in, all these numbers are gonna pop up showing you exactly how fast it's gonna charge and how long it's gonna take. So we've just plugged in now. You can see the speed of charge here, 104 kilowatts. That's probably gonna jump up once we get to about 10% state of charge because at the lowest percent, it actually can't accept that full charge yet. It has to kind of warm the battery up. That rate right there, 105 kilowatts, would equal about 430-ish miles of range that we would be gaining if we let if we could charge at that rate for a full hour of course the battery can't accept that much it doesn't actually you know have that much energy to store but essentially that's what's going on here and you can see already in the you know two minutes we've been plugged in that we've gained uh, six miles already so we're going to watch this and see this kind of uh, increase up to 80 percent and you can tell us right now we're looking at about 55 minutes but you know we'll see it may be less than that once we're actually kind of get warmed up here All right, so that's it. It took 41 minutes to go from zero miles of range to 290 miles. That is at a V3 supercharger. This is one of the latest and greatest from Tesla in a car that is designed to get the quickest amount of charge. So let's hop back to the studio now and see what the experience usually is like for other people in Model S and Model 3, as well as Model X. All right, guys, back here in the studio, and I just want to break down some more information. Now, this data is coming from Teslab, which is an app. I'm a part of the company, so you hear me talk about it a lot. You can get it for free at teslab.app slash Ben Sullins, at T-E-Z-L-A-B.app slash Ben Sullins. It's like Fitbit for you, Tesla. It helps you track what's going on, your phantom drain, your performance, all the different things that you might be interested in, as well as things like logging business trips and all kinds of stuff like that. So that's where this data is coming from. We have have tens of thousands of people using it currently, and we're collecting millions of records of data every single day. So that's why I have access to this, and that's kind of the, the neat thing about this data is that we're able to see exactly what's happening with the fleet to give you a real sense, in this case, of how long it takes to charge your Tesla. So here, what we're looking at are essentially just a simple bar chart that is broken down by fast charging and standard charging. So fast charging is a supercharger, what you would be using if you had a Tesla and you wanted to talk top off quickly at one of the supercharging stations, not something you would have at your house. And if you do, I'm totally jealous. Leave me a comment. I want to come see it. It's okay. So the fast charger, we're looking at an average charge time, a median duration here. Again, this is across millions of charging trips across all different kinds of Teslas uh, for 28 minutes. So that's pretty standard. So in about 28 minutes, you're going to go from, you know, 10, 20, 30% state of charge up to about 80. Now, if you're on a road trip, that is going to be actually how you can kind of proceed through your road trip as quickly as possible. Because if you take it all the way to zero, like I did, what you'll see is that it takes a little while for it to essentially warm up and then it can really crank up to the higher speeds. So you kind of want to start around 20 to 30% state of charge and then just go up to that 80 because once you get above 80, it really slows down again. So that's your fast charging scenario. Most people are spending about 28 minutes there. This is over the past two years of data that we're looking at. So 2019 and 2020 up till October here, late October. Then we're looking at standard. So this is non-fast charging. This is what you would expect at home. This also could be a standard level two 
to plug and something that isn't a Tesla supercharger, but is a bit faster than what you probably get at your house. Here we're looking at 48 minutes for a median duration. Now, these 48 minutes are likely because you went to work and back and then you plugged in when you got home and it didn't take that long to actually refill it. If you have a high power wall charger at your house, which is kind of standard, I think a lot of people, if you have a nicer garage especially, you get about 40-ish miles, maybe 44 miles of range per hour, depending on your car and depending on a few different factors. And so if you only drive about 40 miles a day, it'll take you about an hour. So what we're looking at here across, again, the entire fleet for the past two years is a 48 minute median duration for non supercharging charges. And another way to look at this data that I think is really interesting is by temperature. So what I've done here, this is sort of a histogram diagram. If you remember from college statistics class, the idea is you have bins. So the bins are on the bottom. That's the temperature bin. So going from minus 50 degrees all the way up to 130 degrees, every bar here is five degrees. So you'll see between minus 40, minus 30, there's two bars, minus 30 between minus 20 is two bars, et cetera, et cetera. And I've color coded them on what appear to be clusters for me. Now, this is a visually clustering. This wasn't using an algorithm to come up with it. But what you can see, essentially, once you hit below freezing Fahrenheit degrees here, below 30 degrees or zero degrees Celsius, you see the charging times tend to creep up. Now this is across both standard charging and fast charging. Then between you know 30 degrees when you're at that, I guess, warmer temperature, you're getting into the warmer temperatures, up until about 90 degrees is this middle zone where you have this kind of ideal charging rate or temperature that, that definitely does appear to affect it. So there you're keeping down below 40 minutes for that median duration. And then once you get above 90 degrees, you again see it start to creep back up and then you have some people charging at a, over 125 degrees. I don't know what's going on there. I think I know who that is. Some people that maybe went to the desert to test and see what a charging Tesla's like. But anyways, you get the idea that in extreme cold temperatures and extremely hot temperatures, you're, you're going to have to spend more time charging. And if you live in a colder area, you know that you will actually lose a ton of range because what happens is Tesla's batteries are always maintaining a really great kind of equilibrium. I mean, the, the temperature temperature inside of the battery pack, I believe only changes a couple degrees. And that is to ensure the longevity of the battery as well as the function of the battery. So with that, this is something that, you know, you're going to want to think about if you live in a colder climate or a place that gets, you know, extreme heat, like where I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona. So those will all affect how long it takes to charge your Tesla. So that's it, guys. I hope this was helpful for you. Hope it was insightful. And if you want to learn more about V3 charging specifically, check out this video I did over here with my Model 3 where I took it to one of the first V3 chargers out there in Las Vegas and just kind of really broke down what and why and how it works. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope this helped you. Leave me a comment down below. And always don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you back here in the next one.